long time ago, in the shadow of creation, some animals were different than they are today. Many animals had the powers of thought and speech, and some were a mixture of two or more animals. One of these animals was called goat. Goat was similar to other goats of his in our time, but goat was different because he had a fish tail and not, as would be expected, hind legs. Goat knew he had a fish tail and perhaps he was embarrassed by it, but he never talked about it. The other goats didn't talk about his tail either, to goat or amongst themselves. After some time, goat became their leader and he guided his fellow goats from high hills to mountains and back again searching for food. After many years of leading the herd, Goat desired to see other places than mountains and hills. Although his work was not difficult, Goat wanted someone reliable as his replacement. When Goat was confident that there was a suitable replacement, he started his journey to unexplored lands. After several days, Goat reached what he would later learn was called the beach. He had seen streams and rivers and ponds and lakes, but never this much water in one place. Although it was night, Goat saw that this water stretched to the horizon and possibly beyond. In amazement, Goat was wondering aloud about this body of water, and if it had a name, when a voice answered, it was called Ocean. Goat was startled by this response because he was unaware of anyone else. Goat looked down and saw, half buried in the sand, a creature near his feet. Quickly regaining his composure, Goat said, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. He continued without hesitation. My name is Goat, and I'm from the mountains. What are you called, and what is your name? I am called a crab, and my name is Crab, said the animal, and before Goat could ask any more questions, Crab unburied himself and scurried to the ocean, saying, I must be going, and disappeared beneath the waves. Goat thought this was an interesting animal, and the name Crab repeated in his thoughts. Goat had two legs, his fellow goats have four legs, and Crab has eight. Surely, Goat reasoned, this is a sure-footed animal. Goat stayed on the beach for several days hoping to see Crab again and talked to him about the ocean, but Goat did not see Crab. Goat's thoughts kept returning to his fellow goats and reluctantly he started his return trip to find his herd. Goat was welcomed back to the herd and he told them about the things he saw and experienced, but he did not mention Crab. Goat thought it was unimportant since the encounter with Crab was so brief and he didn't learn much from Crab, only the name Ocean. Goat did not want to be ridiculed by his fellow goats about a tale of endless water, so he never mentioned it to them when he related the stories of his adventure. Goat thought about Crab often because he had many questions to ask him. After some time in the mountains, Goat decided to return to the beach. When Goat left the herd, he did not know this was the last time he would be in the mountains. On the journey to the beach, Goat realized that he might learn more about Crab, the ocean, and things in the ocean if he didn't ask any questions and only let Crab talk when he wanted to talk. This was almost too much for Goat. Every day of his journey, his questions seemed to multiply. After several days, Goat reached the ocean on a moonlit night and saw Crab. Hello, Crab. I'm Goat. I remember you, said Crab. We met many moons ago. Moons? What are moons? Goat asked and flinched when he realized he asked Crab a question. That is how I count time, Crab said, while pointing with his right claw towards the pale moon. All crabs count this way, but Crab wanted to make an impression on Goat, and that is why Crab said, I and not we. I didn't know it was called moon, Goat said in astonishment. Goats count time in days, and upon reflection, Goat realized it was easier to count moons than days for longer periods of time. In his own way, Goat was impressed with Crab. Crab started to head towards the ocean and was approaching the first waves when Goat realized he was leaving. I came to the mountains to talk to you about the ocean, Goat said in a louder than normal voice because of the crashing waves engulfing Crab. I'm busy now, but we can talk about the ocean tomorrow. Tomorrow it is, said Goat, as Crab sank beneath the waves, not knowing if Crab heard him. In time, Goat was to learn Crab was often busy. Despite the untold hours together, Goat was never able to know the things that preoccupied Crab. Eventually, Goat decided that thoughts and not things took much of Crab's time. Beyond this realization, Crab's thoughts were a mystery to Goat. The next day, Crab appeared as promised, and after a few exchanges, Crab began to talk and talk and talk. Goat thought this was the same Crab he had met before, but Crab's behavior was different now than it had been the previous two meetings. Goat did not need to ask questions as Crab talked about the ocean, the animals in the ocean, both dangerous and friendly, 
the plants in it, and everything that Goat could want to know about the ocean. Suddenly, Crab said, I have to be going now. Goat protested that he still had questions for Crab. I have things to do now, but we can meet and talk tomorrow if you want. And without waiting for a response from Goat, Crab scurried to the shore and sank into the sea. Goat was truly puzzled by his new friend. Goats are formal animals, and it is not customary for them to leave so abruptly and without a goodbye or similar parting words. The fourth meeting between Goat and Crab was different than the previous three encounters. It was not a one-sided conversation, and questions were asked and answered by both. Crab learned that Goat had responsibilities to other goats. Crab could barely understand this concept since crabs live alone and not in herds. Upon learning that there is no grass in the ocean, Goat became curious and asked what Crab ate. Without a hesitation, Crab answered fish. When Goat heard this, he thought that Crab might eat him. Just as quickly, he realized that Crab eating Goat was silly, and this idea swiftly passed from Goat's mind, never to return. Their conversation continued for the rest of the day, with the Goat telling Crab all he knew about mountain life and leading other goats. It was sometime during the fourth meeting that they realized that Crab could not climb to the mountain's peak, and Goat could not swim to the ocean's bottom. Whether they realized it at the same time or not, only the creator knows. Ultimately, they reached a compromise and lived on the beach. The beach was ideal for both, since Crab was near the water that he felt comfortable in, and Goat, if need be, could leave the shifting sands of the beach for firmer ground. Through the ensuing years, they would learn about more than animals and plants under the ocean and upon mountains. They would learn about themselves and one another. Crab feels that Goat is embarrassed by his fishtail, but Crab never mentions this to him. Goat knows that Crab thinks about a lot of things, but rarely talks about them. Crab notices that when Goat is in the ocean, Goat is more playful, but when Goat returns to the land, he becomes serious again. Crab never mentions this either. Goat knows Crab does not have many friends. Crab feels that Goat must miss his friends on the mountains. Goat and Crab live for many, many moons on the beach. Before death could take either Goat or Crab and leave the other one alone, the Creator, in his infinite wisdom, took them and placed them at opposite ends of the heavens. This is not, as some people think, to keep them apart for eternity, but is a constant reminder of how Goat and Crab are connected to each other. To this day, people can see either goat or crab in the night sky. Stargazers insist an important event occurs when the moon is in what they call the sign of the crab. Although goat and crab talked for many years and about many things, one word they never spoke. Incredibly, this word was the basis in all that they thought and all that they did, not only between themselves, but towards the Creator and His creation. This unspoken word was... Thank you.